YouTubers, subscribers and new viewers uh, to our channel here, trying to help you figure out what's wrong with you on the Volata scooter. Um, a lot of people nowadays buying small scooters like this, which are designed foldable boot scooters, easy to dismantle, battery comes out, they split in half. So they're quite light and small, petite to put into the boot of your car, so classes, boot scooters. And of course you can see here, there's lots of them. But there are some people that maybe can't afford to buy a larger scooter for driving round about the town. So for instance, 800 pounds, 1000 pounds, it's quite a lot of money to some people, to me as well actually, uh, and they buy, spend 800, 1000 pounds on a scooter and they don't use it as a boot scooter. They use it to go on a daily basis down the streets, through potholes, through rains, through everything, uneven surfaces and these scooters because they're split in half, there's a lot of wear and tear on all the parts. So if you're thinking of getting yourself a scooter, you want to go in the village, in the town that you live, you don't want to put it in the boot of the car, buy a proper mid-size scooter that's not foldable. Because this one has given the customer a lot of headache. What's been happening with this scooter, it's constantly cutting out when it's going over a bump. Now, this scooter, I'm actually repairing this on behalf of another dealership that are very busy and couldn't repair it. So I'm helping them out on this. Now I drove the scooter around a couple of days ago and it's been nothing but cutting out whatsoever. Um, what's actually happening, the voltage is going right down, the light on display is going away down as if the electric brake is binding on. But the electric brake ain't binding on because I've had it running on the rolling road, like I've showed in different videos, and the brake's no overheating whatsoever. So, uh, the other dealership has put new batteries in because they thought the lights were going down, that the, the battery was, was getting weak, so they put new batteries in. Uh, they put new speed pot on it, a throttle pod on it, and it's still breaking down. So, what is the cause of the problem? The customer says it always breaks down going on uneven surfaces. Now, there's lots of contact points from, from the battery to the base unit here, which is underneath the battery, which I'll show you. And there's contact points from the front of the scooter to the back of the scooter. So these contact points needs to, need to be inspected. Uh, I've driven it about um, just before I started this video and it would it break down, would it hell? It's one of these one of these ones, but still the power indicator on the LED was going away down. And it's funny because it, it was going away down and forward, but it wasn't doing it in reverse. So, because there's lots of movement in this scooter, there must be something wrong with the connectors. Now, I've had a wee look at it. I actually know what the problem is because I have spent some time on this, this scooter and it, it took a wee bit to find. But if you check all the connections on any product, you think something cutting out, you will eventually find it. Sometimes when you lift this battery out, you need to check these contacts point here. The contacts, check the colour, are they black, do they look uh, as if they've been burnt, is the plastic round about it melted? And of course undo all these screws round a bit here, get inside the batteries, check that the terminals and the batteries are properly connected up. Now the other dealership uh, has has put new batteries in so when I switch it on there's the power lights coming on so I don't think there's an issue there but I always like checking things myself so I'm going to open it up. Um, and check it. So that's your, your battery. Now of course if you have to replace any contacts it's always important to, place, to replace both sides positive and negative. So if you're replacing these pins if you see the where are we? These pins if you see the torch black burnt the connection melted replace this as well as this side here. We can supply these for most products that are on the market. If you don't see it on our website, just give us a bell, uh, an email, or put a wee list below uh, in the comment section, and we'll help you with that. Now, I can take the seat off. As you can see, this cut is well used. Let's have a wee closer inspection. As you can see, um, use that hell rain and shine. The tyres are bald mud everywhere 
So what you would do, as you can see, you'd look underneath it, check the wiring loom here, control box for this particular scooter is located here. That's the control box in here. And there's the rear wiring loom just below it there. Now we are at wiring loom goes to the rear connector. Okay, it doesn't look it's damaged there at all. It's okay, but as you can see, used on a daily basis. It does need tires. What's it's yeah, it's wearing off the rubber. It's he was offered a replacement scooter, but he decided he wanted this repaired. What I also noticed is that is that the it's, He's broken his charger socket. As you can see, the pins are broken in here. Uh, with this scooter, it's all right. You can charge it in here, or you can charge it on the battery. Uh, you can charge it on the battery down here. So there's two places to charge, and that's your, your circuit breaker. So I need to replace this as well. Now, we've checked all these connectors on here. They look okay. They don't look burnt to me. They are worn a wee bit, but that's okay. So the next port of call is to connect this in behind here. And what I'll do is I'll put the camera down and let's have a look inside. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to dismantle the front from the back and, and check all connections that go from the front to the back. Okay, so on this particular scooter, you've got these pins here. And let me show, put it around here. And you've got these pins here. Right, let's get a bit close up. So what you need to do is you need to check all these pins. Okay, you check these pins. And then what you would do is you check these pins here. Now, if you're checking these pins close enough, you'll actually see that this particular one here is actually melted. Now, not the pin in itself, but if you have a look at the plastics at the back, it's melted. So, the other ones seem okay. So, what we need to do is we need to replace this and the looms. We need to replace all the pins when we're at it. Okay, now that's what's causing the problem, I believe, and I think I'll be right because you see, it's not supposed to be melted like that. And then what we'll do that's the bottom second from the bottom, so that'll be that one there as well. So, what we'll do is we'll replace that as well, which is going to be a pity because it's, it's underneath. We have to remove the body panel to gain access to that. So you've got screws, these screws here, they'll be rusted solid and screws underneath uh, to remove. So it's going to be a little bit of pain. Now, most manufacturers will sell you for this particular one, the bottom two are the motor ones. One manufacturer will sell you the motor together with the connections and not many will actually sell you the pins and a bit of wire themselves, but we have sourced an assembly so you've got your your brake loom which is the top one and new pins with an extension so all you'd have to do is to cut these and join them preferably you you, you don't want a join in it but yet again is if you want to spend uh, 200 pounds on a motor it's a little bit cheaper just buying a connector block Okay, but if you want to buy the motor with some new pins, fair enough, but that's how you get it. And then you still have to buy the connector block as well. And this is a separate part of the back as well. But we sell this as a whole assembly if that happens. With all due respect, some manufacturers will sell you the brake loom by itself because it splits from here, there, but the motor doesn't. So you can get the brake loom, but you can get this extension we've sourced it we've manufactured it and the connections are here okay so that's an easy kit to replace we put that on there it's much quicker 
So uh, some of the pride scooters are like exactly like this. Okay, we can get them. And this will be the other side. It's a perfect fit. So that will then go onto the back of the scooter and into the control box. That will be for you. Usually this one's for the S-Drive controller. This is for your braking loom and this is for your motor on the loom. Now this is just this particular scooter. We, we have all contact pads here. Nice and shiny. If you can see, nice and shiny and chrome. Oh, looks lovely. That's how they're supposed to be. If they're pitted and worn, you may not get proper connections on them. These will wear eventually. These are cheaper. Better quality. Now there are other ones. We have lots of ones. These are the very old ones. The Gogo -go ones. They're still used. And then you've got the, the copper ones. Great conductor. Uh, Little Gem used these. The older ones, Little Gem used something like this, but rounder. So we've got lots of different makes. This is actually for a electric mobility taxi. Um, that's for your battery pads. So you need to check them to make sure they're clean. Do not use emery paper cleaning them. Just use cleaning fluids. So that's your, your pads for your battery. And then some of the older ones, the motor connectors. These are on springs, so they move around. Um, that's your pad. So you would check all these connections because these will start to arc and cause pitting in here. And as they pit, they heat up and they melt. They melt the plastic, so have a look at the plastic as well. Uh, there's some smaller touch pads for a different scooter. So there's so many different types. Uh, and there's some more nice and shiny. They're not expensive whatsoever. Uh, we sell these in sets of three for the battery pads. Um, some scooters, let's say the, the Scirocco, for instance, the Roma, no, the Roma Sorrento. The old version used to split in half. The newer version, they don't make the old version anymore. The newer version's fixed because of the issue. They use these contact pads. And these used to act, as you can see, the difference in size. Uh, totally compared to this bad boy here. So you can see the difference why they stopped doing these. We keep these in stock as well. All different lengths, these pins. So, as I say, this is just one scooter, by the way. Uh, if you have an old CTM or an old Invercare one, the battery pads, they sit on these wee silly things here. You can see how flimsy that is. And it's quite flexible. So, as time goes on, as a scooter, as a battery pack keeps jumping up and down in here, it will eventually wear. So you need to check, this is only held on with a, a, cable, a wire at the bottom and a self-tapper, so these will slacken off as time goes on. So you need to check every single connection here. We keep them in stock, so if you need them, just give us a bell. Some of the pads have springs on them. So you've got that spring here. And it's, I think uh, these ones don't have springs on it. They're just a perfect fit into the loom. There's no springs on these, but it's a perfect fit. And it's tight. So this would have been worn through time. That's why it's heated that connection up and it's melted it. These ones are actually not bad. The only, the only disadvantage with these are a little bit cheaper. Therefore, they tend to rust quite a bit and start to pit. So just by giving it a clean, that will help. But if it constantly starts to break down, get a new set of pads. We sell them. Are just the wee bits here, or we'll send you the whole loom. It's up to yourself. So, this needs to be changed. And I'm really looking forward to doing this. Um, let's put that away. So I'm not going to put the, the new motor on it, because the customer doesn't want to go to the expense of spending a couple of hundred quid on this, see? It's rather to prefer a cheaper option. You can buy these on our website. If you can't find them, just send a comment below and I'll send you a link. Um, but all these connections are actually on our... They'll be linked together with a whole page full of connections for, for mobility scooters, especially the ones that split in half. So check every connection. I'm saying it again and again because I tell people to check the connections. They don't check them properly close enough. The plastic's very important. Um, 
These ones here are hardwired to the connector. You can see that here. Some of them actually got a nut and bolt on there. So you need to check to make sure the connection is clean as well and the nut is tight. These ones rotate. So the connections are good on these. They're really good connectors. But as I say, he's using it uneven surfaces. The metal starts to wear. Things start to move more. And when you put these on, don't put it on tight. Put it on slack to make sure that when you line them up, that it fits nice neatly and if you put that one on tight that one on tight they may not line up it's important that you check that uh, hello youtube i'm i'm back again this is day two on this on this scooter and i made a wee a wee boo boo and i pressed the record button on the camera then i replaced this and then i noticed i didn't press the record button mistakes can be made very easily so i'll quickly go through and show you exactly what i've done okay what i've done is i've actually removed the old one as I say, now there's two sides to this, if you ever look, the bottom two are the motor ones and that's where this one's melted in here, okay just in that one there. So when you replace them, that's got a wee dowel in there, that goes on a spring on there. So you can see it's also melted in there. So how I done that one, was remove these, now these screws are supposed to be slack. Now that is a... Uh, it's a seven mil, I think. Seven millimeters. If you don't have a seven mil, then what you can do is you can use a pair of pliers. I think that's that one off. Okay, and now you take the bottom one off. Now there is a a spring in the top, and you don't want to lose that spring. Otherwise, you'll be on the phone to me asking me for a spring. Right, so you pull that off, springs in the top there, and that should then come out. Okay, so that's your spring. So that, then, technically speaking, when you put it back on, that has to go in there. So I removed the, the electric brake, put the brake back on, that's when I put the new one on. Uh, cut the wires, as you can see here, and joined them up with the clamp that's supplied. So when you put it back together, always put the spring in first because if you screw this on, you cannot put the spring in it. Back in there. Put your screws in. As I say, you don't put them in tight. Because it will need to move about. So I say the best thing is to have a wee magnetic tray, tray to put the the nylon nuts in just slacken that a wee bit it's too tight that's it So it's moving about in there. So that's the back done. So I put the connector back on and put some insulating tape on that. Uh, you can put uh, amalgamating tape on it uh, or a heat shrink. As you can see, that's where it's all worn. So that's the back bit down. Now I need to do the front bit. Now I've actually not done the front bit, so that'll be a, a contract. Uh, just to let you know, this is this particular type of back, there are the shop rider ones look like this. You either have two on one side or or three on one side. They're all different. This is a new set, you can see it's not worn here. But some of them they do wear. And I have actually seen these slackening off. As you can see, it's not a nylon nut on that, it's got a split pin in there. Or I have seen these wires, for some odd reason, uh fracturing. So I have replaced these on numerous occasions. Right, so that's the back done, and now we'll need to do the front. Now to do the front, you have to remove this. Now we can supply in two formats, a format number uno, like this, with the plastic molding on it, or a little bit cheaper, exactly the same, without the plastic molding. All you have to do is just put 
push this, undo the screws at the back there, push these in. Now, <laughs> highly recommended if you get it in this format, uh, take pictures. When you take this off, take pictures because you don't want to put them in upside down. So, the motor's at the bottom and the electric brakes at the top. If you put these in, you need to put them in the colours, take pictures. The top two, doesn't matter which way around you put them because they're for the electric brake. But the bottom is very important, otherwise the motor will go the opposite way. So that's then connected in there along the wiring room into the control box which is underneath here. Let me see if I can lift that up. The controller's in there, so we need to undo the screws in here at the back of the controller. Right, if you have a look in here, you can see I need to undo these, that top screw and then that bottom screw. The wire goes underneath and then back over the top and it plugs into the controller, which is in there. Okay, now if you take the wires out, highly recommend you take pictures because you've got to put them in the right way. So, my aim of the game, now I don't know who designed this, but I need to take these screws out, but it's going to be a contract and a half to get my tool in there, my spanner in there to take this off, but so be it, needs to be done. So as I say, take pictures of how this is, so it's easier for you to put it back together again once you've dismantled everything. Now, so I've removed the wires here from the controller. I've taken pictures so I know what to do and I'm going to undo these screws here. Now when you put this back together again, I like putting it on not too tight because this actually moves about a wee bit as you can see and that then has to line up with the other side. So what you do is you put them on tight but tight enough so that you can actually move it so that when you join the back to the front you can actually join it in nice and gently take it out and then tighten it and then try it again. If you put it on and tighten it straight away, what's going to happen is when you put it on, it may be misaligned, as you can see this movement here. That makes a difference. Let me slacken the bottom and show you. There is quite a lot of movement in here. So there's a lot of movement. And if that's not aligned properly, it's you either when you close it, you're going to jam or break it. And when you break it, you spent all this money for nothing. So very important, put it on. Put it on tight enough. That's one. And as I say, take pictures so you know what you're doing. Always remember, red's at the bottom. Right, so that's coming out. Red's at the bottom, I need to remember that. One nut, second nut. You can see the movement in here, but you can actually put it in different ways. So if I put it in this way, then it's wrong, as you can see the red's at the top, so we'll fire that in there. And red's at the bottom. So remove the screws from the old one. see all this big movement here so let me put it more or less in the same place but I still need to put it on properly Here, so I've got more room with this. 
And they could have done this a little bit easier. Just putting a a wee bit tighter yet, I think. Yeah, that's okay, that side's all right. So when you join the front to the back, you don't want to jam it in, do it nice and gently. That's too tight, it's not moving. That's it moving now. So that's the wire. Need to cable tie it on here so it stays there. And then it'll go underneath here. Cable tie it on here. And then put it into the, the connectors. So hopefully that should be fine. Once I've plugged that in there, I'll show you how to join the back the backs together. So I've now I've fitted this connection on here. And it's moving about a wee bit so and it is still tight to move so when i put it on i'm not going to force it on i'm going to put it on gently because we want to line it up to get the perfect fit see it's not fitting properly i'm not going to force it i'm just going to move it gently i'm going to have a wee look in here to see how far out over i need to bring it There you are. Okay, that's it in. So I'm going to take it off gently. Try it again. That's it in. Perfect fit, nice and tight. I'm going to tighten it now. I'm going to tighten this without moving it. That's the top one. I'm going to try it again before I do the bottom. Perfect fit. Okay. Let's tighten the bottom one. And we'll pop put all the screws back on again. Try it once more. Right, I'm happy with that. This actually customer doesn't actually dismantle it, but it's a good tight fit. So I'll screw it all back together again and then take it for a test drive. Right, job number two of this particular scooter, now that I've taken it for a test drive, it's working fine, it's not cutting out, is to sort the charging socket. As you can see, he's broken off the pins in there, he's pulled them out. So it's no charging, so he usually charges it now through the, the battery box. Uh, but he wants this sorted as well, so we need to remove that. And uh, put a new one on here. If you need any of these, just let us know. Uh, we supply these as well, so you can pre-wire them if you want. Or if you want them in one piece, just let us know. Hey, that's me soldered a new connection on here. Uh, pointless showing you how to solder it, because there's plenty of videos of me soldering that connections on there on the charging socket um, so I hope this was informative about how to join the front to the back new connections if the scooter is cutting out um, if you like to like and subscribe if you have any questions from different types of scooters feel free to ask us I'm here to help you just leave a comment below if you like, didn't like, or what you would uh, suggest doing differently. Um, all input is taken either way. Every day is a school day with anybody. So you take care and best of luck sorting your score. Take care of the now. Bye-bye.